Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Comic-Con Podcast, Season 2, Episode 41. We are recording this on October 19th, 2022. Appreciate all of our listeners. Of course, if you're new, old, or indifferent, uh, we got a fun packed show tonight unfortunately zach is not here because he went out to vegas to watch a really cool festival of tons of rock bands um couldn't even t- name all the, the different bands that are gonna be out there because i really wish i was there but we're recording this one early because of course i am also going to go see black adam on thursday night so you're obviously listening to this on friday so we'll be definitely doing a review of the black adam movie possibly who knows going to be doing helping us with that one but uh we do have a special guest slash co-host Um, We've had him here on the podcast before. If you don't know, make sure you go check out last year's episode. Uh, DC Comics artist. I'm not sure if I should introduce him as Cloud Strife or Super Saiyan Trunks, but uh, a good friend of the channel, uh, V. Ken Marion. What's going on, Ken? How are you? What's up, homie? How's it going? Thanks for having me back. I'll take those compliments, man. I'll take them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, If you don't know, Ken is, of course, a, you know, DC artist, Aspen, you know, um, he, he was on the podcast last year talking about a lot of stuff, you know, Ken, what has been going on with you, you know, over the past year, you know, where can people find you? What are you work currently working on for anybody who hasn't been following you constantly on Instagram and where can, you know, social medias. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Instagram, like you said, I'm at V Ken Marion. Um, and then Twitter I'm at V K Marion. So I po- do post regularly on both those places. Um, yeah. And like Justin said, I'm a comic book artist. I've done tons of work for DC and Aspen. And um, since last time I was on the podcast, I've uh, been working with a, a new company that we've been working from a new uh, startup company from Canada. Um, and we're working, developing a new property called Death Shroud. So um, I've been working on that all year, pretty much since we talked last time. And um, we're getting the whole first chunk of it done before we put it out. So that's what I've been working on pretty much all year. And it's not released yet, but we're hoping for 2023 is um, is uh, the uh, the plan so far. And um yeah, and it's it's gonna be like the coolest like kick ass comic book that you've that you've been wanting like your whole life, you know. Like it's uh, it's <laughs> definitely like just it goes back, it harkens back to those um like '90s comics roots with a, like a little bit of anime like thrown in from me and like just super high action, high energy, um, just kick ass character. So yeah, it's I can't wait for people to check it out. Um, you can see little sneak peeks of what I've been working on on my socials. Call it, um, the book's called Death Shroud, and it's uh, it's gonna be super cool. So. Yeah, it's uh, is it still available to purchase through Indiegogo or is it, uh, so it kind of done? So the the first issue, um, uh, I believe. So so that the first issue that was on the Indiegogo was um, mm. I wasn't actually part of that. That was a, a proof of concept to get the, the ball sort of rolling. Um, so I, I'm coming out with issue two going forward through issue ten, um, and um, so we're gonna have release info with like sort of like a repackaged kind of thing coming out. I mean, and that's on. great that you're yeah. doing it this way. I like how you how it's not launching until it's, be, you know, at least the first ten issues. And I know you and I spoke about it at New York Comic Con, and we're gonna also get to that as well tonight. But you know, the fact that even though you're not on issue one, there's obviously a lot of great artists who are doing some covers on that. But you're, you know, cementing yourself from issues two. And I think you, you know, when we spoke, you were up to at least issue seven. But like you said, it's going out to at least issue ten before it actually yeah. launches, which is great because. You know, you don't want to do one issue now and then you got to wait three months for the next one to come out. At least you can have a you know worldwide launch where you can have it come out each month for people to read. Right. Like that's the best yeah, way to do it. Totally. Yeah. The um, the creator of the of the uh, the company and the character, his name's Chad Larson. Um, he's a really creative guy. He comes from the world of um, esports and video games. So he, he's coming at it from that mindset of like. He, like we're we're approaching this as this is like a triple a title of video game so you know you don't release them before they're ready right mm-hmm. you know like like cyberpunk you know <laughs> so I knew you're gonna say that <laughs> yeah so we're we're taking our time we're putting all of our best efforts into it like i said chad is the creator and writer of it and i'm penciling and inking and andrew dollhouse is coloring it and um we're really putting all of our energy into making this the best product we possibly can and make like the coolest comic that you've seen like the last like 20 years so like like I said, pouring everything I have into it. So hopefully mm. everyone checks it out when um when it's ready. Like when, when it's ready, you'll know. Like I'll definitely be shouting from the rooftops and Chad will be too. And like we're, we're planning to get it out there and let everyone know it's coming. So yeah, just, yeah. just stay tuned and uh yeah, 
It'll be great. It, it looks sick. And, you know, for the people that didn't check out last year's episode when you were on, you know, can you kind of give us like an idea, like what the comic is? Obviously, if you, people are following you already on Instagram, they can check out some of the art. But like what's kind of, you know, you said like the 90s feel, the anime, like, mm -hmm. you know, what would you kind of take it to you? Like what type of 90s characters or? Yeah. You know, so yeah. So like um, it's definitely inspired yeah, Chad. Um, he, he definitely wanted to create something in the vein of like Venom and Spawn. Like those are characters he really loved growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and so the story is the soldier who gets killed. And when he dies, he finds out he is the son of the angel of death. So he's half human, half angel. And he's, and he's reincarnated into death shroud. Who's this like this hybrid human, like they call they call them Niflheim in this world. So, and he's kind of thrown into this, this war between a faction, a, a rogue faction of angels that are kind of like, up to no good and uh his father who's death you know and mm -hmm. and um so, sort of like the that sort of sets the table for um all the action that follows um but it's yeah it's really really inspired like i said by spawn and um uh venom but also like for me like dark siders was huge huge inspiration oh, yeah. um mm -hmm. which um dark souls like those video games like that devil may cry like stuff like that like is a big um tonal inspiration for a lot of it so and you know it's just um like the stuff we've been creating and coming up with and through our filters so it, it's it, like i said like my um what i want out of my art is things that look really slick and cool like characters that look slick and cool with like tons of energy so like the the action and the energy is like really dialed up so that's kind of what i'm focusing on and yeah, in every issue, like a lot of stuff happens, which is cool. Like a lot of like this big set pieces, big big fight mm -hmm. scenes. So, a lot, a lot of story progresses in each issue. So it's really really cool to be part of something like this. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And you know, I've been following you for so long, and I definitely think that your art, you know, just even when you do sketches or just you know uh, art to print, it's it's always great to see that. And I'm sure you know because you've you've gotten to do DC, you've gotten to do like the big three, right? And you know in different iterations you've gotten to do like aquaman and flash like that but i can see especially in this art and like you said darksiders i i love that game like the whole you know four yeah. horsemen of the apocalypse like i get that like and i'm now i kind of want to go back and actually play those games <laughs> they're, um, they're sick right yeah they're so great so you know you obviously with with this character do we get to see like some cool villains like i don't know if you can kind of like tease like one villain you know just to kind yeah of... so i i can't really talk too much about them like i in the first issue it's this rogue faction of angels the archangel of order is mm -hmm. in the first issue so i can talk he's like kind of the uh the emperor so to speak in like our star wars analogy here um and then he has a uh, a lieutenant who'd be like the Darth Vader, you know, for okay. the, the the analogy called Thrall Gath, who's a, a demon. And there's um, uh, it's and it's there, there's more villains than that, but I don't want to spoil yeah. anything that All comes right. up. But they're kind of like the the main two that are our hero fights, and uh, yeah, they're they're cool, man. It's it's like I said, it's a, uh, it, it's it's about like the Archangel of Order kind of going off the rails and like Death Shroud kind of yeah. taking awesome. them down. So yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's a badass um book for sure it's cool well i mean i know you've been hard at work you know uh, constantly that's pretty much all i see on your instagram is you know the little teases so you know you're you're on the drawing board as they say and i'm sure you know with you know it's been so busy right you you only did and, and we're going to get into that next is new york comic-con you only did new york comic-con so you yeah. know taking all your time literally doing all this and and andrew is great as well like i've i've seen andrew's work over the years as well um you know, oh, he's coming behind it. your stuff is, you know, and we, I've talked about this and I always speak very highly of you, highly of you, you know, your lines are so tight, you know, they remind me of like Michael Turner. It's just unbelievably awesome to see your stuff. And I cannot wait for Death Stroud and to see like, because I can picture it like the angels of death and, and different characters and already some of the images that you've had to see where it's going to go, especially in those, at least, you know, the two to 10 that you've already kind of cemented yourself in. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a blast. And Andrew's been absolutely crushing it. Like the, the pages I've been turning in have been like tons of details crammed in there. So he's kind of been doing like overtime to like get all that colored up, mm -hmm. you know, and like he's absolutely knocking out of the park with everything he turns in. And and the story that Chad's written is, like I said, it's really fun. It's really engaging. It really brings me back to like the comics that like I grew up with and the kind of like anime shows I used to watch and stuff where it's just like big set pieces, like big. Oh, yeah. action like so it's just so fun like all of us have going to the attitude like we want this to be like the coolest funnest thing that we're working on so and you know we've got plans for the future too so other okay. cool stuff so 
can't spoil anything, but you know, there's like a lot of, a lot of fire fires in the uh, irons in the fire is the word. Right. So yeah, well, it's, I'm excited, you know, uh, you know, definitely people out there listening, make sure you at least, you know, get out there, follow death shroud. They're also, they're also on Instagram. You can follow Chad, uh, follow Ken as well to see all like the teasers and stuff that's going on. But uh, you know, let's kind of, you know, of course we talk about death shroud. We were just talking about New York comic con. So like I said, your first and only con of 2022 was New York comic con, you know, how was your experience this year? Because last year when we had you on, we actually had you on just prior to New York Comic Con of 2021. You know, what was your experiences this year, you know, being in, back in kind of like full force, you know, really post COVID um, compared to like the other years? You know, was it a po- was it positive? Was it big? Obviously, I'm sure you listened to our, our episode last week with Peach. I don't know if you heard anything or saw anything. You know, how was uh, how was the con for you? Well, let me start off by saying that all the comic book news I get, I get from you. So, so, so <laughs> okay. I, didn't, I didn't hear about any of the controversy. And whenever I hear about a uh, comic book controversies or news or anything, it's pretty much from your podcast. Cause like, I am so disconnected from. Well, from, that's like, fine. The, I, from, like, I appreciate that comment. Stuff. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> so I heard about all the, the, uh, the, the, the controversy and, you know, the crowds and everything. And yeah, I can definitely see how that was a, an issue. Cause it was, it was really crowded, man. The show got, was very, very crowded. Like last year was, Last year was still busy. Like last year was mm-hmm. a busy show. Like it, I feel like they kind of felt very similar. Like the only difference was last year. Yeah. Honestly, there really didn't feel like much of a difference between the two shows. Um, this year, ironically, I felt like each day, cause usually the pattern is like Thursday is busy, but Friday is really busy. Friday and Saturday are really busy. And then Sunday is kind of like, eh, you know, that's yeah, kind of, of the, the trajectory. But this year, at least for me personally, and, and with people, some of the people that I was next to too, it seemed like each day sort of stacked. Like Thursday was like the worst and Friday got better than Saturday got better than Sunday was the best. And like, hmm. I've never experienced that in a con before. So I'm, you know, it, it just goes to show that maybe it was a, just a fluke with me, but like I said, a lot of other people I talked to experienced that. So who knows? Like, I think people were just excited to be back and like out and about and, you know, at a comic yeah, con and stuff. And, and yeah, and it looks cool, man. Like I went up to the floor, the main floor on, um, cause we were in artist alley. So I went up to the main floor on Sunday morning. Yeah. And, um, just look, walking around and like seeing all the displays, the big dragon ball Z display was sick. Oh yeah. 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 I don't understand why, like, and, and, and again, you know, you and I, we love, we love anime. Right. But I don't get like why and how like dragon ball Z and one piece was like the big main sponsor. Like when you look at the badges, it's just, it was like, that's what it was like. New I was York so Comic happy about Con. that. I was so happy about that. <laughs> well, dude, it was the first year there wasn't like Walking Dead stuff, which is like, you know, uh, well, that, yes, it? you're right great, on that. <laughs> great show, like great show, great franchise, like love it. But like, it's been like 11 years. Every year is the badges were walking like zombies <laughs> on the Walking Dead. So it was, it was, I thought it was refreshing to have something different on the badges, you know? It's like, like no Marvel, no DC, like boom, dark horse. Nobody like really not one yeah. big comic thing, like sponsors, like the badges or has like a giant booth. It's always like, I always feel like, yeah, the, the one piece and I don't know too much of, you know, the characters and anything, but like that giant thing that they had set up and yeah, all the, of course, you know, Dragon Ball Z was big, Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, they had, uh, obviously yeah, the, the, the models Gundam. for Gundam, like, yeah. but that's did you see the gun? Did you go to the Gundam base to get see oh, any of those exclusives? I saw. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't able to get in because when I was up, it was before the show floor was open, so they wouldn't let us like actually walk in to see the store what they had available. But it looked yeah. it looked dope how they had it. Yeah, they're it, it's crazy like how big like things kind of like to me. I feel like this year was spaced out like the bigger and it was just like people were walking through the booths. Like I've just never seen the anime booths as big as they were compared to previous years. Like they've been pretty big. But yeah, this year definitely with the One Piece movie and, and Dragon Ball Z were some big things. Yeah. But uh, you know, as for as far as being an artist, Ali, and like you said, you were con- you know, constantly busy. You know, taking commissions. You know, selling stuff. You know, what was probably one of the best commissions that you did over the weekend, or someone maybe pre-ordered from you? Uh, I had a bunch of fun ones. Um, the, on Sunday, I had a Gambit commission that I did like in a real like a really because like, they were only there for a small amount of time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to just buckle down and do this. And like, it came out really, really good. So I was super proud of that one. Um, and I got to them on time before they left, which I was psyched about because I didn't want to have to like mail it out, you know? So I was like, yes, oh, it got done. It looked great too. So I was like <laughs> super happy with that. Um, but yeah, I had a really cool Spider-Man one for a pre-show. Um, that one was really 
one of my I posted that. I, I have some more to post too. Like I did a, a gunslinger spawn, which is pretty cool, and a supergirl Wonder Woman. So there were definitely some cool ones that I got to to do. I'm gonna, I'm slowly gonna post them out on my socials. Mm -hmm. so. And I you and and I know people can still go ahead and buy some of the prints that you had. Yes. From, uh, exclusively from New York Comic Con too. They can just kind of contact you or yeah um, through your art. Yeah, I contact my art rep, uh, Josh Raybuck at Josh at Modern Mythology Comics.com. Um, modern Mythology Comic Art.com. It's on links for all of it. It's on my socials. Um, he's my art rep. I'm rep by Modern Mythology Comic Art. So if you Google them, you can shoot him a line and we've got some prints left over available and original art. And, you know. Nice, nice. And I, I, I'm obviously, I'm sure the answer is no, but you know, are your commissions open at this time or N not really? No, you're just um, so busy with death route, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And I'm getting married in December. So like all my free time is, is spoken for. So yes. like, and I know all about that. So yeah, I, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure like <laughs> yeah. that, we were, we, you were supposed to be on last week, but you know, of course the wedding stuff gets, you know, in yeah. the way and that's fine. You know, we, we rescheduled and I'm, believe me, I'm happy to have you here on, on the podcast. Cause of course there's some stuff that we're going to talk about. That's, you know, not so much of Zach's alley, but you and I are, are big fans of. So um, let's kind of transition into some of the stuff that we are going to talk about tonight. So um, just dropped today was the Titan season four. They did drop the first full trailer today over on, of course, YouTube. Um, we've talked about this in the previous episodes of who they've kind of been showing off, who's been cast as some of the characters. But the trailer just dropped. We got full, you know, voices and, you know, more guess TV accurate of characters like Lex Luthor. We saw brother blood was in there. Uh, Jinx and mother mayhem. We also get to see actually like an actual suit for beast boy, which is good. Um, you know, we just kind of watched the trailer. I I'm definitely enjoying this. See this series already has been great. Like season two with, you know, Deathstroke, and Jason Todd and, and, you know, scarecrow was all right in season three. He was a little odd, but I loved obviously the Jason Todd red hood stuff, but you know, this one definitely takes on to the horror side of Titans. And, you know, still we have the still main counterparts. You still got Nightwing, Raven, Starfire, and Beast Boy from the other previous seasons. And they're still building themselves up uh, with Hawk and Dove gone. You have Connors in there again. And, of course, this new Tim Drake Robin. What did you think about, uh, you know, the season so far? You know, the trailer so far, I guess I should say, is really like the, you know, this is, it's been like forever i think that we've seen like the season and it, and it comes out in november so you know i know you just got to see the trailer what did you think about the trailer uh ken yeah it looks really good man sorry about that i just dropped my microphone that was that thing <laughs> everyone heard i'm sorry about that technical difficulties uh, yeah. always um yeah no it looks really good i love season one i thought season one was so sick i haven't i have not caught up on seasons two and three but everything you just said sounded great like like red hood and everything. So damn, like I, this trailer, like I, it's what that show that I love season one. And I just like kept putting off and putting off and I didn't watch the other ones yet. So seeing this trailer really made me want to catch up because it looks sick. And Superboy looks like accurate Superboy with the t-shirt and everything it looks cool. And mm -hmm. Lex, that whole Lex with their story with Superboy that looks dope. And yeah, Nightwing looks cool as hell because in season one, I, I never saw him in the costume. So yep. I was like, damn, he looks awesome. That costume is great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it looks, it looks good. Yeah, I'm excited, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird because so what they're doing is so it premieres on November 3rd and a lot of these streaming services always drop like one or two or even three episodes, depending on what, you know, Disney Plus typically sometimes does three episodes. But so it's going to be a double episode on the premiere and then it's doing weekly uh, until December. So you'll get at least a couple more episodes, but then it takes like a hiatus and it doesn't come back until sometime in 2023 with six more episodes. So at least we're going to get, you know, figure, you know, maybe five episode five to six episodes in november total and then we're getting another six in 2023 which is it's a decent sized series because i felt like the first ish the first series or season really kind of like you know you're kind of flushing out all these new characters to people get introduced but now like the main characters are there but now you're introducing all these other characters and like i said it's got that horror motif it's got brother uh, brother blood and jinx who have been both you know main adversaries in the titans realm so um, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I don't know if they're going to do another season, obviously with all the shakeups that DC has had, you know, it, it's kind of tough to find out, like, what are we going to see next? Like, are we going to, is this the final season of, of HBO Max's shows? Because I know Doom Patrol is coming back. Um, and that's another show. Have you at, at all watched any of the Doom Patrol stuff? No, no, I haven't. I, I've been really bad with like 
a lot of the superhero stuff. Like I, I don't have Disney Plus, so I haven't seen any of the Marvel stuff. And it's it's not from lack of like desire, it's just like time. Like there's so much stuff that like that we've got stacked to watch that it's like we keep saying, Oh, we're gonna go to that, we're gonna go to that. Like I really want to see Moon Knight, and that was like mm-hmm. one of those things like we're gonna get for Moon Knight, and then just time kind of came and went and like you know, it just watching too much anime man that's what's going on oh yeah (laughs) believe me so uh for you know obviously and now our next thing is going to get into some anime stuff but yeah like anime is the same thing like i'm in the same boat like with all the streaming stuff that's out like if like obviously my main thing like for the podcast itself like star wars and marvel like i need to watch those so like wednesday would hit the star wars show needs to be watched thursday the marvel show needs to be watched but then there's everything else like hbo max has like a million things like i'm not finished like I haven't watched at all anything on HBO Max this season. So like I haven't watched the anything of Harley Quinn and I love that anime. Like the the cartoon was great. Um I did not watch get the House of Dragons because I couldn't watch House of Dragons and like Lord of the Rings at the same time because obviously there's just too many names and confusing. Right. But now like I've been going back to Hulu and like I'm watching everything. Like I need to finish the final season of Attack on Titan. Like that's my goal. Yeah. 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 And then everything else. And like for me, like everything that like when I when we watch stuff at night, like I have to get like Laura on board too. So it's like it's gotta be something that she likes too. So like that's some of this stuff. Like Titans, like she was like she liked Titans, but we started when we started season two, we watched like you know how season one ended weird and the first Mm -hmm. episode was really like like we watched that first episode that wrapped it up and then she was like, Okay, well we'll, let's come back to this and watch something else. And like and then just one of those little things where we just never got back to it. So but I will, I will get back to it and watch season four. It looks good. Yeah, definitely. Um, so sticking with some anime news and you know, there may not be and see this is why I'm glad Zach's not here, but I have Ken, which is awesome. So um one of it, it one of my all time favorite animes, Bleach, is revealing its fate for the the thousand year blood war arc the final 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 season of uh bleach it's been gone for a while it's coming back they just released the first episode this this week um it's been like a decade since bleach has been on tv but uh right now of course it's on you can watch it dubbed or i should say subbed but they did just drop an announcement this week that the um dubbed version will be coming to hulu starting on november 4th and what's great about the dub version is so far they have confirmed that many of the previous voice actors, of course, Johnny Bosch, who plays Ichigo, you know, Michelle Roof, who plays uh, Rukia, Derek Prince, who plays Uryu, and um, one of my favorites is Wally Wergnett, who plays Renji, are, are all coming back. So, um, man, Bleach, the Thousand Year War, I'm so excited for this because it just, it's been such a long time and it's just leaps and bounds like 10 years. It's almost reminded me of like how dragon ball Z ended. And now where dragon ball is at now, like the way the anime is, is just like completely different. And, you know, with thousand year war, you know, that you you're 10 years and it looks phenomenal. And I know, you know, you, you and I are in the same boat, Ken, like watching anime from 10, 15, 20 years ago to now when they redo something is like leaps and bounds what they used to do. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty nuts, man. Like, I actually never watched... I, no, I shouldn't say that. I watched, like, the first five episodes of Bleach recently because it was one that I missed growing up. Um, and, like, it's sick. Like, I love the show. Like, I like the characters. They all look really cool. They got this cool story. So that's, like, one on stacked on my list to, like, dive deep into because, like, I really, like, really want to see this this new, like, final season. Like, it looks sick. Like like you said, the anim- even the animation just looks so, like, dialed up and crisp and, like, you know, hyper, like like refined and hd you know it looks so good and like and those character designs are just so cool you know Mm -hmm. like you and i we're big we're big gundam fans so like we've seen it from like the days of amuro ray and like gundam 79 to like you know the build-up through like gundam wing and z and then like even more the newer stuff and the, the most latest one that's premiering this month which unfortunately for whatever reason we're not getting it's called mobile suit gundam the witch from mercury it's, yeah, I heard about it. I haven't seen it. Yeah, so the problem is we're not getting it, and it's going on Netflix, but it's only going on Netflix, like, internationally. So I have no idea, like, how we're going to get it. Like, I think it's on Crunchyroll, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. But, did, you know. Did, it, um, did you ever watch Gundam Double O? With, one? I think, yeah, it's still, like, the Universal Century year, right? No, 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 it's its own thing. Double O. It's, zero, it's, it's Gundam Zero Zero, and it's uh, the main character is Setsuna. That, that's um, that's a really that's like 
I think objectively the best one. That one's sick. So really I actually good. do have those on DVD, but I've never seen that series. Ooh, man, that was like the last one that I bought on, on DVD. That's when you get time. I know, I know time being an issue of everything like we've been saying, but that one is like, I think objectively the best Gundam show. It's so really, good. yeah. It's like, it's like, I, I love Gundam wing. Gundam wing is probably my favorite because of nostalgia, but of course. Gundam double O is like, like, it's sort of like, it was made like, I don't know, like 10, 15 years later, but it's like, like, you know how Gundam seeds kind of a remake of the original Gundam. It's like kind of takes the similar concepts yeah. and sort of like redoes it. Mm-hmm. That's what Gundam double O is that for Gundam wing. It like takes like the vague concepts of it and sort of redoes it in like cleaner, better storytelling and like mm. the art sick. And yeah, it's, it's really good. Hmm. I'll definitely have, I'll definitely have to add it to, I, cause I, I literally have them. Like I have all the DVDs yeah. here at my house, like wing and zero and the mall. Like I have them yeah. all. I just don't, I ever That's never like sat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because like there, everything else, there's other, there's other animes yeah. that come in the way that are literally sitting on my Hulu watch list. And, you know, eventually they stay, oh, it's leaving at the end of the month. And now I feel like I got to rush through it. But yeah, exactly. the gu- that's literally the last Gundam thing that I bought. Like, but I always feel like other than wing, like mm-hmm. the whole universal century, like anything that occurred during, you know, universal century timeline has always been like, has always been great. So like the last one, when they did, uh, the last one on Netflix, I forgot what it was. I, I, I talked about it and the it, unicorn or no, not unicorn. Um, narrative, not narrative. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, I know what you're talking about. Hathaway, Hathaway. Yes, because he's obviously from the previous, you know. Yeah. uh, God, he's in like Universal Century 90 or whatever it was called, whatever that was. But yeah, because he's he's like the son of Hathaway from the, uh, he's the the general. Yeah. Yes. The original one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just cool. Like they have different characters, so. Yeah. I know well, everybody well, turns off on this episode. No, no, there, there, there's a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of anime fans out there. Let me ask you this: Do you prefer subs or dubs? It depends. It's a hot button issue. Ooh, no, no, no. It's definitely. I have watched. So when I originally watched Bleach, I originally watched it subbed, and then eventually I would watch it dubbed. Uh, Attack on Titan, same thing. It, I think I feel like it all depends on the the anime itself. Like if it's too fast like Gundam, like when they're battling in space and talking, like it's tough. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. What about you? I prefer dubs. Definitely. Yeah. And I know that that's, that's when I, when I say that people like always look at me weird, but, I, but here's why one, like I, I get a headache trying to read so quickly. Like, like I can't keep up with like how yeah, fast course. they're talking. Like you're saying, like when they talk so fast, and then trying to like register who's actually talking and then read at the same time. And then also try to watch the art. It's like, yep. it's too much for me. And like, gives me a headache. Um, so I definitely prefer dubs for that. And like, I don't know. I feel like because I know what they're like, because I know the language, like I get the emotions of the characters more easily mm-hmm. in the, you know what I mean? Like I'm not thinking as hard so I can kind of like relax and not like try to think so hard. That might make me sound like an idiot, but no, no, I hear I you. Yeah. No, you, you, cause you definitely, you can feel for the character obviously. Cause you can't like, you can't look away cause then you may miss something and it may be, you know, a pivotal moment or an emotional moment. And, yeah. I, and I get that, you know, even <laughs> animes that I've watched multiple times, like I could still walk away, but hearing it dubbed, yeah, yeah, I could. I still feel that emotion from that character at that time. So, and, and my my weird thing with it too is this might just be a me thing, but like when I'm reading it, because I'm having to read it so quickly in my head, I'm interpreting it as the people just talking really fast, like not getting out like the acting, because I'm almost mm. like not even hearing the the Japanese acting. I'm just kind of like interpreting the reading of it. So it's like I'm just like basically interpreting people just like talking really, 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 really fast at each other, and like that's with like no emotion because like, I'm just trying to like speed through it. So I don't know. That's just might be just me a weird, a weird me thing, but no, no, I I, listen, I completely get it because it's definitely, you know, and you know, what is great too. And and for the people that are anime fans or even, you know, people who like cartoons like ourselves is I always like hearing similar voices. Right. So like if you watch specific anime, like, you know, Oh, you're like, oh, this guy played on like this show and this show, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> I always like that always brings you back because then it's just like, oh, my God, I remember this anime and, you know, certain characters who've literally only done voiceover work, but you recognize the voice and you're just like, 
he's always been like this type of character or she's always been like this type of character. So it like, it relates to that, you know, it relates to that. So it always brings you back to another anime and it always is like free flowing because when for me, like I know watching bleach, um, Kenpachi Zaraki, who's one of the, the 13 court guard squads, like he's one of the generals, they changed his voice like after like season eight or nine. And I didn't like, I didn't like the voice guy now, but like, the whole previous seasons he's been great even though it's like the, the same character but like the voiceover yeah. just like eh. but like i remember him from other shows so it's always you know it's it's good i i like that yeah yeah no i get that man totally so uh let's get out of the anime stuff because of course you know ken and i can talk <laughs> anime all, all night long so um, but there's some stuff from the, this is going to be a really DC heavy because I don't really want to talk Marvel this week because I feel like that's what we always talk about. But um, several things are happening, of course, in the the, the DC Discovery media transfer. Um, so a lot of stuff has been re reported over at The Hollywood Reporter this week. Um, we're going to drop about five quick things and, you know, uh, both myself and Ken are going to kind of take them. So um, if you don't know, and by this point, and I feel like it's terrible, but. The Man of Steel is in early stages of development with Henry Cavill set to return. If you don't know, uh, post credit scene, there's somebody that returns. Clearly, I just kind of said it, but I'm not going to say it in the Black Adam movie, but it happens. Um, another thing, Zatanna at HBO Max is no longer moving forward at HBO Max, but it's going to be, quote unquote, shopped around to other streamers. Uh, next up, we have the sequel script for The Flash has already been completed, even though we have no idea when the first one is going to be coming out. Uh, another thing that they're dropping, James Gunn is currently working with Warner Brothers on multiple DC films and is possibly in talks to actually be doing The Man of Steel number two. And last but not least, um, our buddy Matt Reeves, who of course did the iconic The Batman. Uh, we are already getting the spinoff of The Penguin, but he's already in early talks to direct and work on multiple spinoff shows. Um, they're talking on early stuff with possibly Clayface, Professor Pig, and Scarecrow, which is crazy because I, I've been real. I really want Scarecrow. But um, out of those five things, Ken, like, what are you? You know, what are your thoughts on any of them? What are you most looking forward to? Do you think anything is outrageous? Well, I mean, I'm psyched about Man of Steel too because I've been waiting for that since 2013. Um, Superman's my favorite superhero. So I'm psyched that, and I loved Henry Cavill as Superman. Like I know his movies were kind of controversial. Um, I liked them, but I mean, regardless of the plots or whatever of the movies, if you didn't like them and dislike them, whatever, like I think everyone kind of universally says like he's a great Superman. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it'd be great to, to see him come back and like, maybe, maybe with a different director, you know, to like get some, like see like what he can do with someone else's voice would be really cool. How did you um, yeah. feel with like Zach directing them? Like, I, I liked him. I liked him. Yeah. 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 No, I really, I'm, I'm just saying like, I know that there's controversy. Like I know a lot of people didn't. So, but I actually really liked them and I would have, I'd be happy if Zack Snyder came back for the second one too. But I mean, I, I really doubt that's going to happen, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I loved his like high energy, visceral version of Superman. So, um, yeah, it's definitely like brought him down to earth. Like, and we, I've spoken, you know, I, I've definitely spoken about this and, you know, my brother and I, you know, we're none of us are Superman fans. You know, he's, he's the boy scout, even though he's your favorite, you know, character, like he is the boy scout. He's yeah. a God among gods. Right. But like the way Zach brought him onto the screen, like really brought him down to earth, like made you really care about Superman and show that there's another side of him. And, you know, the way that he could kind of, you know, kneel and, and be down to the people. Like I, I love watching Man of Steel is just like one of my most favorite, like there's so many great scenes in that, that it's just like, so, you know, like there's things that happen to him and you're just like, you understand like how tough it is. Like there's this scene I was watching recently. Uh, I was flipping it on and it was on TV is like the part where he's working at the bar and there's the guy and he's like messing with the girl and like the guy like pours the beer on his face and like, yeah. throws it at him and just like you could see it in his face of how like god he could just like throw him like 300 yards <laughs> but yeah. he doesn't but then he gets him back by like literally like putting his truck in like uh, like he this takes, is like, like a telephone pull, pull or yeah basically yeah. and it's just like it's funny but like you you see that like you really wouldn't ever see that in the comics but you get to see the emotion 
from Henry mm-hmm. Cavill. And I think, yeah, like bringing him back is perfect because Henry Cavill is a great actor. So, and people already know him as Superman. It's like, this is what we really need to do. Like, you can't bring back another, you can't cast another Superman. It should be Henry Cavill because he's not really doing, I mean, he's doing other movies, but it's like, don't go back to Marvel. Don't do anything at Marvel, no matter what they want to pay you. Like, let's cement him into, you know, the DC lore right now. So. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm like of two minds of all of it, right? Like, cause I love the Robert Pattinson Batman movie. So mm-hmm. like if DC had said, we're going to scrap everything and start over with this as like our new universe. Like I would have been okay with that too. Like if they had like a, a brand new Superman that like fit in with like Robert Pattinson's Batman, which I would have been fine with that. You know, like I feel like I'm very open to like different ideas they come up with. Like I, I don't get so married to one idea because I like, you know, as old as I am, I've seen so many different iterations of these characters. So I know that like, like they're all finite, like they're not going to last forever. And they're mm-hmm. always, they're all going to be redone. And like, it's just like, I'm just happy to get whatever we get when it comes out, you know? So um, like if they had recast him with someone else, like, and it was a new Superman, I would have been cool with that. But like, I'm so happy to get more of Henry Cavill. Cause like I said, he's so great as the the character, you know? Mm. And like yes, us DC fans, we're very, uh, <laughs> you know, we get to <laughs> short yeah. end or shit end of the stick basically. Yeah. <laughs> or well, movies I, like, it was funny you were talking about Superman being a like the the god character because like to me like why I like Superman is because like I don't see him that way at all like I see him as like a very relatable like like just a to me I see him as like a guy who's just trying to do the best with what he's got like mm-hmm. and and what he's got is you know superpowers but like I feel like it's a very relatable um, parable I guess for lack of a better word for like regular people you know like just do the best of what you can try to be the best person you can in the world around you, like with the abilities you have. And like that, like, that's why I see him very similar to like Spider-Man. Like I, n- I never really understood why people don't think he's relatable because of that, but they say Spider-Man is cause it's like, people can't stick to walls either. Like it's not, that's mm-hmm. not like the powers aren't, you know, like but to Spider-Man's me, Spider-Man's always broke. Like that's easy yeah. relatable. Like that, yeah. that's what it I is. Mean, like, I, you but, know, it's so tough because like Spider-Man and, and this is, I wish Zach was here. Cause Zach would obviously, you know, Zach hates Spider-Man, but it's like <laughs> Spider-Man's relatable because he's, you know, been in like school and college and like work. He's had like a shitty job, a shitty apartment. Like people can relate to that because that is like a real life thing. People mm-hmm. in Superman, Superman's always been, he's always had a job. He's never been like homeless or like in a way like broke, but he's, it's just for me and it's just so tough. Like, you know, who, who would see him as like great writing? Like, I always feel like writing Superman has always been tough. There's very few like amazing storylines for, um, for Superman and even slash Clark Kent, but like for Spider-Man throughout the years, there's like, anybody can like relate to any of the storylines like Superman. I always feel like, you know, for you being a Superman fan, like for me, obviously death of Superman and and maybe like the, the whole doomsday stuff is like, I would think the pinnacle of Superman stories, but you as a Superman fan, like who are some of your favorite writers that have done Superman or super, or even Superman stories? Yeah. Like I Superman birthright is like, like my favorite comic book. Like that's like Mm -hmm. one of my absolute favorites. And like Lenny Yu's art is a huge part of that. Like I love his, him as an artist and like, but like that, that was a very relatable, like almost Smallville esque take on Superman. Like Mm -hmm. he's not in high school. Like he's like an adult, but like, it it felt like the show Smallville kind of like put into the comics. And I really liked that. And like, I love the stuff that Jeff Loeb did on Superman, Batman. I thought that was really cool. Um, But like, honestly, like the Superman that I love the most is the one that's like in my head, you know, it's like the one that like I made up my own stories of when I was a kid with my action Mm -hmm. figures, you know? And like, like, I, I think I've got like a cool Superman story in me to write at some point and draw, you know, like, and I feel like that's that's the one that I gravitate to the most. You know, it's the one that it's the sort of the perfect Superman to me has not been done yet because it's Ooh. like the one that's in my head. You know, it's a, kind of like a mix of all the things that I like, you know, so how how the rest of the fandom would uh, agree with that or not. <laughs> who knows? But like, you know, the, in my personal opinion, yeah, I know that that's that's a that's such an amazing answer. Like, seriously, like, that's just, that's a great answer for, you know, how you portray Superman, because I'm sure, you know, like people could say that with about any of their characters, like any of their favorite characters. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's a real answer. And I, and that's just amazing. 
Um, it actually almost brought me to tears listening to that. Ken. <laughs> uh, so yeah, for, for myself for like, um, you know, all these DC projects, you know, for me, I'm a huge Zatanna fan. So like losing Zatanna on HBO max, um, is, is a big deal. Like I was really looking forward to that. I was really looking for like a casting, like getting into the magic users. And now that it's going to be shopped around to other streamers, like I feel like the whole thing of having HBO max, like, where is it going to go? Like, I really can't see it going to Hulu because like Hulu has still like some Disney Fox properties, Netflix, maybe because they did the Sandman series. And I feel like if I ask you, if you watch Sandman, the answer would be no, because <laughs> you have no time, but I, I loved Sandman and I never read any Sandman stuff. Like I knew bits and pieces, but yeah, Zatanna is like, Oh man. And when I read that news this week, I was just like, come on. Like, We've been waiting for like the dark users, like the magic users of the DC world. And I feel like we're going to get a little bit in Black Adam with Dr. Fate, but it's just like the tip of the iceberg of all the different characters that are out there. So, well, what if what if they next week they announce that like it's going to be a movie? Like they're not taking it to streaming. They're going to make a movie. That'd be cool, right? Like it's a I, movie. Yes, I would still That'd take a movie. I would still take a movie. But it's got to be something because, we, you know, they they completed the Batgirl movie and I was super excited for that and then just completely canned it. Like, literally, it's locked away in a vault. A few executives were able to watch it and then that's it. And you're like, I guess we're never going to get to see Barbara Gordon for a while. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that that one, I, I know that was that was controversial, but like as a huge Green Lantern fan, like that movie like killed the momentum for that character. Like, I mean, to this day, people don't want to make a Green Lantern movie because of the stink of that one. So like it might, you know, I mean, who knows? Like, I feel bad for everyone that was involved in it because it sucks not to see your work scene. But if it was a Green Lantern scenario, it might have like saved their careers by not, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, because yeah. Green Lantern, I mean, when's the last time Martin Campbell, you've heard him. I mean, he's a great director. Martin Campbell, like he made, he rebooted James Bond twice, you know, mm -hmm. like he makes good movies and. Green Lantern was just like not good and you know stalled him out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um it's it's tough. I, I don't know where they're gonna go with that. And and Green Lantern, yeah, I'm uh the Jeff Johns, like any of the Green Lantern stuff from the time that he wrote it till he stopped has has always been like amazing. And you know, this was back yeah. in I think August, I remember reading August or even uh late July when everything was kind of like shit in the bed with with dc but they say that the the green lantern series it, it's still a, it's still alive what mm, that means cool. like but that was again that was august and, and we're at mid-october so you know with everything that they're kind of announcing like i feel like they're going more towards like anything that's batman related obviously they're keeping that on you know that on track because of course they see how great the batman was and of course how great the new Suicide Squad was with James Gunn. I feel like they need like someone like that who can, you know, kind of reboot the universe or continue with it. So, what if uh, what if James Gunn's gonna do the Zatanna project? Uh, it would be interesting, but I could see him. I could see them giving him like a more A list character. So, okay. like she I could, could be. I feel like she could be A list though. She's essential. Yes, I agree. I yeah. agree. But like you know obviously with him doing suicide squad and then with um peacemaker and, and then i'm you know obviously they're doing a second season of that i think they would really be like all right you know you've you've done great with like the suicide squad and, and with peacemaker but let's kind of like let's give you something really good so yeah I, I definitely think i could see you know him and jeff johns talking and be like let's do green lantern like the right way yeah yeah, the show like I'm excited for the show, but at the same time I'm like tempered because I heard there's no John Hal or Kyle in it. Like at least from the reports that I heard, like mm. I don't know if it was on your show years ago or if, like a different show, but so, like I saw it somewhere where it was like Guy Gardner was going to be like the lead character, and like I'm not really a huge Guy Gardner fan. Like he's just not the he's like the one that I'm not like a big <laughs> fan of. So. I don't think anybody is. Yeah. Well I mean he's got his fans. He does have his fans out there, you know? Like I, as someone who's done tons of Green Lantern work, like I've I've met fans from every Green Lantern's got a fan and that's awesome. Um but my my three are like Hal John and Kyle are the ones that I like the best. So um yeah I'm a little sad that not none of them are gonna be in the show apparently. So but yeah I'm still excited though. I can't wait to see it. Yeah let's let's hope they do it right because I mean, to be honest, the best thing that green the the best thing like animated we ever see Green Lantern was uh, I don't know if you ever saw the show like on years ago it was on uh, 
God, was it was in car was a cartoon network? It's one of the, like, the the CGI one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw I saw parts of that. That was pretty good. Yeah, it was see like when I didn't see it when it first came out. I think I saw it maybe when it got put onto like the DC Universe app before, way before HBO Max. And like, you know, they had like the red lanterns and like that was cool. Like they brought in like they actually brought in the different color spectrums. So and they had um one of the main uh Razor, who's one of the main red lanterns in this show. But he wasn't really like a character in, you know, the, you know, like you got Atrocitus, which was like awesome. And you saw like Blez and like all the other Red Lanterns. And then every now and then they would trickle in. I think they trickled in like Laura Flees as the Orange Lantern. And it was cool, like for what yeah. it was worth. Like it was a good animated series, you know, like and it doesn't get its That's due. Cool. So I would love to see a DC animated show or series or, or even series of movies like with like the level of animation of like a jujitsu kaisen or like the new bleach like i would love to see like that level of animation applied to like the dc characters because i feel like a lot of the dc animated stuff it's not bad right but it's like it's there's i feel like there's a noticeable gap though between like that like ova animation and like mm -hmm. the like the saturday morning cartoon kind of stuff if you will you know so well that's the one thing that dc does well and does better than and than marvel and marvel stopped doing it like they still put out these you know movies uh, mm -hmm. a few movies a year and i literally i literally just picked it up today I, it just came in the mail from amazon the the batman batman and superman battle of the super sons with damien and, and john kent so literally i i can't wait to watch this and the way the animation looks is a little bit more on the scale of uh spider-man across the spider-verse so oh really yeah it's different this time so it's more like cgi than your, your typical you know uh you know kind of kind of uh standard animation you know that they've done in the past with whatever batman superman whatever the case may be so i know it it looks different but i feel like even those like one hour movies hour and 10 hour movies that come out every couple months i think they do like three a year have always been way better than what marvel did and yeah nobody ever talks about the marvel ones because they're so bad like I, I, we'll talk about green lantern they, they had a really good green lantern one of those i think it was called first flight it came out like 10 years ago that one was mm -hmm. great was a really really that one had high quality animation that one was great um yeah and like the new frontier that was one of the earliest ones that one was good too like because they yeah. did like the style of darwin cook it was really cool i'm big yeah. darwin cook now, so. i'm trying to look at because i have actually i have them all and like that's like it's like my top rows all my dc stuff so i'm trying to think of what because then they recently just came out with one too that was really good it's uh it's got john stewart the main character is kind of like john stewart and hawkman oh yeah yeah i saw that i, I didn't see that just didn't see it but i saw i saw like ads for it and i was like oh, yeah I like that one um that one was pretty good but yeah first flight with like sinestro and that, that, it's, that it's definitely cool badass one. but yeah. yeah like i said i i literally just it just came out this week super uh, ba uh, batman and superman battle of the super sons um it's got damien and, and of course jonathan kent and uh looks like the main the main villain is starro basically taking over the, the justice league and the, the kids have to, uh, save the day. So, um, probably nice. do a review on that next week. So, um, before we get out of here, of course, we always end our shows with, um, with what are we currently reading? And it's been, uh, it's been a tough week this week. Not too much has come out this week that I, I really want to talk about. Obviously the main thing, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed this and it finally came to a head. And we obviously were talking about this guy before, uh, Jeff Johns, his final, uh, six issue mini series flashpoint beyond kind of uh kind of incorporates all the stuff that's been going on the multiverse it kind of of course included flashpoint batman which is one of my favorite batmans thomas wayne but it you know it kind of wraps up with the flashpoint universe actually being part of the dc multiverse now with what happens uh if you've been reading it it's got the thomas wayne batman dealing with a uh, clock the clockwork killer who ends up being Martha Wayne, the uh, Flashpoint's Joker, which has been phenomenal to look to watch, like just the whole dynamic of having, you know, Martha Wayne as Joker and, you know, Thomas Wayne, Batman, obviously the Batman to the, the yin to the yang is even more prevalent in this because it's family. So um, don't want to spoil too much how it wraps up, but um, I definitely recommend the six issue miniseries that they just finished up this week. Um, definitely my pick of the week. You know, Jeff Johns has always done a great job with, you know, writing, especially this Flashpoint stuff. He he did the original Flashpoint before it was New 52, you know, writing Flash, Green Lantern. It, it's just been phenomenal to to check out. And then, then there's also obviously the secondary story of this has Batman, 
kind of facing off against Rip Hunter. And um, if you watch Legend, if you anyone's ever watched Legend of Tomorrow, that's kind of where most people I would think would know Rip Hunter from being, you know, one of the t- the time legends. So um, that's my really only good book that I've read this week. Uh, I've been so busy that I haven't had a chance to really, I know Deadly Class just ended and that's just, I would say that'd be my honorable mention. Uh, I've been, I'm so happy that it finally have come to an end. 56 issues. Uh, Rick Remender, Wes Craig just has been like ups and downs with that series, but uh, Deadly Class has been probably one of my favorite image books and I'm so happy I stayed with it. And um, I got to briefly get to check that out for issue 56, but um, I definitely will be finishing it up and then it'll be listed on eBay because I don't know what to do with it after that. So, um, but what about you, Ken? I know you're very busy, but, uh, are you currently reading anything you know, not, it doesn't have to be something this week. It could be anything over the past you know, yeah, I mean, few years. I, what do you got? Did you, uh, did you read Vanish by uh Stegman and Donny Cates? I did. I that did get really a few cool. uh, variants for that. So yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I read that recently and that was really cool. Like I was psyched about that and yeah, I'm psyched to see like Donny Cates and, um, Stegman doing like create your own thing. And it's like a really cool, like, like hero action bait it was like 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 it feels like like um gritty harry potter almost like it's kind of like the vibe i got from it like like badass that's an interesting like, way to that's a, <laughs> yeah like, like badass that. harry potter and i was like dude this is sick like and the art looks so good so yeah shout out to those guys they did a great job and i think jp mayer is inking it i think um i want to give all the credit i can remember um but yeah, and then other than that, I've been reading some some sweet Gundam comics that uh, Justin hooked me up with at New York Comic Con, which was brought me right back to my childhood. Man, he got me <laughs> these uh, uh, Gundam Wing and Gundam 0079, the first issues of both. And I I had these. I didn't have the 0079, but I had the Gundam Wing ones from like I, I don't have them anymore. But I had them when I was a kid. I got them at Toys R Us, and they like came packed oh, wow. like on like the action figure racks. And I remember I don't know where they went. Like I didn't sell them. I, I couldn't mm-hmm. like a few years back. I was trying to find them, and then so like I think it was um when you were talking about getting them like last year or something on the podcast. I was like, oh man, I used to have those, and I was like looking for them. I couldn't find them, so it was so cool. Like so so nice of you to took me up with that. Um, yeah, I've got them right here. It was it was a, such a memory trip, man. Like I was like, man, this is so good. <laughs> yeah, I, it was. It, they're very believe me. I try to look for when I go out like comic hunting. Like I, it's so tough to find like anime comics. Like there's only a certain few, but like when I find them, I always pick them up. So like when I saw the Gundam because I already had one, and I was just like, oh, I gotta grab this because at some point I'm gonna run into Ken, and I'm like, I, I gotta give Ken a copy, like without a doubt. So, um. You know, I'm glad that, you know, you you didn't have them. Obviously, you had them at one point, but you can't find them now. So I'm glad that they're displayed over there. And I'll have to find you the the rest of the 0079 <laughs> series at some point. Because, like, it's wild. Over the probably the past, like, year and a half is really, but I've gotten more back into finding, like, video game comics and anime comics. I was at uh, uh, our friend Greg, uh, the King Kong show, which we've talked about several times here on the podcast. And I think it was either the first or second show. This one guy had um, the 0080, and I didn't realize that they did 0080 Gundam like as a comic book series. He had the full set; it was like ten or twelve issues, and I was just like, "Oh, wow. oh my god!" I was like, "They did this as a comic," and he go and he was just like, "Oh, what's that?" I was like, "I was like, oh, it's you know an anime thing," and I picked it up, and it's literally like panel for panel, like the the anime itself, which is awesome. That's awesome, yeah. So that's really cool. I have um last year I found a uh, a trade. It wasn't an issue, it was a trade, but I think it was issues at one point. And it was from like the I don't know, 99, 2000. It's Street Fighter versus SNK. And it's like it's like it's not a manga, it's a comic book, but it's mm-hmm. like drawn by like a manga artist, and it's like Ryu and Terry Bogard and like <laughs> and the Dark Stalkers and all these and like oh, I love all it. these crazy like mashups fighting each other and it's like the story like their like worlds are coming together and stuff and I'm like man I gotta get this is like like a time capsule here you know it's like nuts <laughs> yeah it, it's I just I went down such a rabbit hole like the Gundam stuff uh, I found that like like Neo Genesis Evangelion like had a comic I picked up like I found the number one on that. Yeah, the the Street Fighter Darkstalkers I always try to grab. I I recently slabbed up a Darkstalkers number one, like, and I'm only missing I think like two issues from the original like Viz Media like series. So like, yes. it's interesting like trying to find like these things to, to even like obviously you can go on eBay, but they're like stupid expensive and they're in like shitty condition because they're like such a low print run. Like, and even the Gundam stuff like, uh, you know, obviously like you said like there's the Gundam Wing, there's the Double O. 
it was 0079, which I provided to you, the 0080. But like, I was even like going back and, and looking um, as I look up on my CLZ app, all the different Gundams. Like, so like Gundam Wing has the regular Gundam Wing. There's Endless Waltz. There's also, like blind it's called. Blind Target as well. Yeah, it's like yeah. Z- episode zero. And then, yeah, Blind Target. And I don't have all these. like. So those, I remember those are like not from the show. Those are like yeah. side stories, right? And mm-hmm. like as a kid, I remember I had like, I was trading comics with like friends back then. And I had like one issue of like Blind Target. And like, I remember being like, this is so crazy. This is like more of the story, you know, like. <laughs> It's it's sick. Like if you're if you're a Gundam Wing nerd, like those are definitely like yeah, like you know, cool things like that, like spread out the universe. So know? now it's like hunting them down is like near impossible because yeah. it's just like who who has this stuff? Like yeah. it's usually like Marvel, DC, and in the indie stuff. But like this is really deep indie. That's like in someone's warehouse because they don't care, and it's like it doesn't sell. So like why even have it in their store taking up space when they could be taking up space for like Superman and Spider-Man and Batman. Right. Like, dude, I was in over the summer, I was in New Mexico visiting family. Um, my, my fiance has her aunt and cousins are out there and there's, we were in a mall and there was like a comic. It was like a collectible slash comics slash Pokemon store in the mall. And, um, and they had in the back, they had like 20 or 30, probably like 30, like short boxes of just comic books. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, my fiance and, and her cousin, they're, they're looking through Pokemon cards and then, and her cousin was like really looking through. And so she was, we, we were in there for like an hour and a half as she looked through Pokemon cards. I spent the entire time looking through every single one of those short boxes, trying to find like the Gundam comics and there were none. And I was so mad. And I was like, it's like, this is, this is be the place it'd be. And like, and I just look and look and look at it. And I went through everyone. And I'm like, I can't believe there's none of them here. <laughs> it's it's crazy the things that we do that we look for hunting like you're never gonna find it's never gonna be in the in the in a store where you think it will be but when in like in a backwater store like that like you're like i gotta be able to find something like it's like you look under the g no you look under m and then you're like no i'm like come on like it's like i always ask now like when i go to shops that i've never been to i'm always like do you have like a section for like video game and anime comics they're like oh we have like manga on the wall and i'm like no 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 it's (laughs) It's <laughs> Japanese animation, but it's an actual comic book. It's not in like the lower, it's not in the small digest. It's like yeah, Viz Media stuff or like Eclipse, it, like that, even it, that, like Eclipse comics, the, like Appleseed. Do you remember mm-hmm. the anime yeah. Appleseed? Yeah. yeah. Like that's really old stuff. So yeah. like, God forbid you can We're actually talking find like that. 90, anyone who's listening who's younger, this is like 90s gold. This is like the Toonami era. Like, yeah. You know, like this is, yeah. Like and then there's like animes that they've just never made comics for. Like I would love, like they've done one like vampire hunter D I, you know, I'd love to have more of that, but even nowadays, like, you know, like one piece and bleach and, you know, attack on Titan don't really have like actual like comic books. They have like the manga, but I would love it more in a combat comic format, even though it's great in manga because the anime, the art is great. Mm-hmm. Like I really want a comic book format. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, I maybe at one point that Final Fantasy comic that I've been <sighs> pitching that crossover to DC, maybe one day that'll come true, you know? So I think I can't you just like do like one, like a three <laughs> issue thing and like sub, you know, and just sell it to like private people, like, you know, just kind of like <laughs> 30 pages for issue one, 30 pages issue two, and just kind of like just, you know, it's like your own because com- when I was young, <laughs> listen, when I was young, probably in like sixth or seventh grade and now we're now we're really gonna get off topic but we're gonna get personal with me like i was probably in like i was probably in like middle school my brother was in elementary school and every saturday we would go to uh, a local uh, union it was union county college for people in new jersey union county community college and they had like a, a comic book art class so literally we'd go for an hour and you would actually like learn how to draw for in a comic book so like I came up with like my own comic book and then every obviously what happens is like after the class, like everybody would go to like there's a shop that was nearby and everybody would buy comics like you'd meet back up over there. But like so literally like I can recall myself like, you know, creating the panels and like doing everything. I was a terrible artist. My brother's the artist in the family. But like I, I would make, you know, I had my own comic book. It was mine. Like so you could do that with, you know, the, the Final <laughs> Fantasy and the DC characters. Uh, I, I will n- never legally ever do that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I, I would love to like reach out to Square Enix and maybe like get them to like, if they ever want to make their own comics, you know, just, just on their own. That'd be, that'd be sick. I would like, take I, a Final Fantasy like, one shot. Yeah. Square Enix. Like if you want to make comic books, yeah, I'm right here. 
You know, yeah. you know, you know who to you know who to call the drum for. You. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, Ken, again, I so much I appreciate you for coming on the show. You know, I love nerding out with you, especially on on video game and comic book stuff, stuff that I know. Zach's too much a fan of, but we always have listeners who are, you know, all different things. And and a lot of people, I actually, um, one of our listeners, he recently sent me a, a photo. I, I can't think of all the top of my head. I think uh, my buddy Hard and I, he sent me uh, a picture of like a Gundam model that he was working on. And then he sent me like the completed thing. Um, it was the Amaro Ray. Oh, I can't even think of what it, the, his like the newest of all the Amaro Ray like Gundams. I forget what it was. The, the, but, uh, the new Gundam? The, yeah, the Ray, yeah, yeah. It was... But you know, again, like we got people that listen to, to to that watch anime, and I and I appreciate the photo, and we and we always touch base, and people you know learn a lot from both myself and you and stuff that we post. So, um, again, season two, episode forty one, with myself and V Ken Marion. Before we get out of here, uh, Ken, you know, where can people find you? Get all your plugs in because I want to make sure that uh, you know people don't miss out on the upcoming comic book. Oh, thank you. So yeah, Instagram is at VKenMarion. Twitter's at VKMarion. Also follow Death Shroud on both platforms and just type in Death Shroud for either of them and it'll pop up. That's the, the official page for the comic that I'm working on. So yeah, um, yeah, and stay tuned and we'll have uh, info soon, hopefully in the coming year. Um, there'll be some news about what's going on and when it will be available and stuff. So yeah. Awesome. They, awesome. They, thank you for having me on again. Thank you. Like, this is so much fun, like nerding out and like oh, talking all this it. stuff. Like, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love nerding out with you with talking anime. Cause there's not too many people I can talk anime with, you know, Zach, Zach is into video games, but when it comes to anime, there's not too many people that, uh, that know about all the different animes over the past, you know, 40 plus years that we can, I can nerd out with. So <laughs> I, I appreciate you coming on too as well. Um, for myself, before I get out of here, uh, last minute trip, I am, I actually will be at Baltimore comic con next weekend. So, uh, Baltimore comic con is from October 28th through the 30th. So I will be there. If anybody's attending, please shoot me a message. Maybe we'll meet up for lunch or dinner or some drinks, um, over at the Baltimore convention center. And, uh, I'll be there with some, at least some other community members. Uh, but that's it course you could always find me on nemesis prime on instagram the comic-con podcast and don't forget you could always send us messages to any of our direct messages or to the comic-con podcast at gmail.com hate mail love mail articles voicemails whatever you want to send us um that's it we'll catch you next week peace out everybody peace